Welcome back everybody to Farming Simulator 22. I am an old guy gaming and we are going to uh, finish field 71 here. I've made quite a bit of progress on it. Uh, let's get into the build menu so we can do a flyby here. Uh, where is the field? So yeah, we have, um, I've cleared everything on the main field. So I think uh, we were right around in here the last time I, when I left you in the last episode. So all that's cleared. I have, um, I had the the big M mow the main field and am currently in the process of picking up the hay. Uh, so I need to actually get him started again because I just restarted the game. And everything along this bank is cleared away uh, for the most part. I left that a little bit of brush there, but that doesn't matter. Everything on this side's done. <coughs> um, we're gonna have this is gonna there's this is a big area here, so uh, we can't. There's like a little cordoned off section here that we don't own, uh, you know, for where where this water is. But otherwise, that's good. And uh, then what I've done over here is because this is the state park, I have not removed these trees and brush because I think that should stay there. Um, you know, to surround the park there. Uh, but what I'm gonna am gonna do is I own all of this land here. In fact, I own the land basically um, from here over to here. This is kind of the property line here, and all the way out to the road. So I'm gonna get rid of the rest of these trees, uh, this and brush first. You know, and then we will. What we're gonna do is we're gonna cut the wild grass. And then when that's done, then we're going to plow it and replant it with field grass. So that is the plan, Stan. Um, let's see, where are we at with money? 45, 492, yeah. Uh, nothing's really happened since I left you in the last episode as far, in terms of, you know, making more money or spending more money or anything like that. I've really just, been, you know, been working on this. And um, we do have all of our own hay done over here, as you can see. And everything's rolled in inside the silo. We currently have, let's take a look at that. Um, right here. So we currently have 475,000 liters of, of grass in there and 233,479 liters, which has since been converted to silage. And this is now once again, sending the silage to the biogas plant. Oh no, it's not yet because I think we have to get to the next hour. Uh, but it is activated. It's just waiting for it to come through. Um, let me just double check and make sure this is set to distributing. It is. Yeah, it's set to distributing. So when we roll into the next hour, which will be in eight minutes from now, well, actually 16 minutes because I have the time split uh, into halftime, um, that should distribute and then, you know, get going again on the factory. Okay, so that's pretty much where we are. And so what I'm going to do is I thought I'd bring you back and show you, you know, just, just the final uh, bit here of clearing this land. And we'll just do this in a time lapse and put some, some tunes on and stuff like that. So hope you guys enjoy this. I'll see you on the other side. Let's do it.
right, guys, we have the final tree. A lone shag bark hickory. Um, so I thought about actually leaving this here, but... Nah, <laughs> I don't think we will. I don't think we will, because, you know, there's a whole whole nother little section of hay we could have here. There's still plenty of trees around. Um, yeah, so let's take this one down. And get it processed. Whoop. And we have um, a lot of wood chips. I I don't know how many wood chips we have, but I'm guessing that we have at least 100,000 liters and probably even more than that. I, I haven't actually counted, um, you know, how long we've been or how many loads I dumped over there, but it's, it's been a lot. Okay, let's see if we can get some of these little smaller limbs off of here. All right, let's do this. Um, if some of you are were curious why I wasn't putting the really small branches in the chipper, because you would, you would do that in real life, because, you know, everything will chip. The reason I stopped doing that is because I discovered that it, you don't get anything. So even though I can feed it into the chipper, if you don't see the chips flying, you don't get anything from it. It'll still suck it in there and make it disappear, but it doesn't add anything to the bunker. So that's um, so I you know I figured that out. I didn't know that at first, but I figured that out, and um, that's why I stopped putting the the what I call the delete pieces in there which are basically all these small branches. So let's just get the rest of these guys off. We'll get a twofer here. And you know, the thing about the elm trees is after a while, I don't know how many trees, you know, I've done since we started this. It's been a lot. It's probably taken me in, in real life four hours maybe to do all of it. And, and I've done that over the course of, of two different days in real life. But the thing is, is you kind of start getting used to the different types of elm trees. Um, basically, I was working with small, small, medium, and large. Um, I don't know if there's another size in between. And so I kind of started to figure out how to cut them, you know, properly and, and all that and got, got pretty good at this, really. Um, I thought so anyways. Uh, towards the end we got a lot more efficient at it. And then of course with the with the big logs we would use the the crane and I used the as you saw the winch a couple times to pull the big log closer to the crane. And I used the forestry mulcher to take out the large stumps, but the smaller ones I just did with my saw just to save a little bit of time. So overall, you know, it was fun. I enjoyed doing this. And look at the field, you guys. It looks so different now. <laughs> it's so opened up. But, man, that is going to turn into cha-ching for us, you guys, big time. Like I said, I, I'll bet you, I'll bet you that we're going to increase the profitability of this field, especially if you count the stuff across the road, you know, by 30%. That's kind of the number that's in my brain. I have really no, I, no idea. Uh, I haven't measured that in any, any in any quantifiable way, but I'm thinking about 30%. We're going to go with that, <laughs> and that's a pretty substantial increase, you know, in what the the field's going to give us. So um, there are other areas on the map that have elm trees and whatnot. Whoa, Lord Almighty! Okay, <laughs> uh, like that area right over there. We'll probably eventually. It's it's tentatively in my plans to buy 56 and then we'll have all these you know trees over there that we'll need to clear out too so this may not be the last time we'll do this but uh, yeah we got quite the pile of wood chips going on here as you can see and again I'm guesstimating there's at least a hundred thousand liters and maybe even more um, in there and we'll probably make a nice little chunk of change uh, off of that when we sell it in January which is of course the time to sell uh, wood chips so let's get this tipped up here. And there we go. It, it's too bad it doesn't tell you, you know, if you look at it, how much is here, but it doesn't. But uh, that looks pretty cool. I like the texture that they use for this, too. It looks very realistic. 
All right, so we are finally finished with Mr. Chipper here. And uh, he did a good job for us, so we're going to return the chipper. And we're also finished with the forestry mulcher, too. So let's go ahead and return this uh, all of this stuff. But, guys, if you're looking for, in my opinion, the absolute best forestry mulcher that's available, um, this is on ModHub. Uh, it's the Sepium Maxis Oil 350. I'm also using it on the Silver Run Forest uh, series, too. It's just wonderful. Um, okay. So we'll return all that stuff. And what in the world's going on? <laughs> I don't know what that was all about. Um, okay. It's like an out of body experience with a chainsaw. Don't <laughs> weird. Anyway, okay, so let's see what's next. Our uh, hail, uh, our bale pickup dude in the forage wagon finished. Uh, we got to do a little bit of mop-up work for, uh, for that, though. And then um, I think I'll get the McCormick. I'm going to actually park on this side of the field. Uh, well, no, here. Actually, we can park. No, actually, yeah, this side of the field. <laughs> a little scatterbrained here. Okay, so we'll get the McCormick going on the rolling on the main, you know, the existing field after I get the rest of this loose hay picked up. And then we will jump into Big M and get the, what I'm calling the wild grass or the margin grass, border grass, whatever you want to call it. We'll get that mowed and picked up. And then the next step, of course, will be to start plowing this um, extra area and adding to the field. Now, I'm not sure how course play is going to handle the field once I add the extra parts to it because it's going to be somewhat irregular so I'm just kind of curious to see you know how it does that and hopefully it will be adequate uh, to what we need okay whoops there we go so yeah let's get on over here and just get these dregs picked up We have, uh, we have 36% of silage additive still in the tank, so we're good to go on that for now. I haven't really figured out a good way to get course play to handle these corners. Um, I did try it at one point with the sharp corner setting, and it still missed it. You know, it still didn't get all of it perfectly, so... The smooth corners, which is what I use, is, is really better because it's it's just less prone. It, well, it's faster for one thing because they just keep going. Whereas if you use sharp corners, um, it has to stop and get repositioned and all that. But e again, even with that, though, it didn't do anything much for fixing the problem there. Pick up some of that hay that's probably been sitting there for years because we could never reach it before. Um, okay. Let's go get the other sections here that need to be picked up, and then we'll get the rolling started. I think I may have mentioned this, too, in the last episode, but <clears throat> it doesn't look like we're going to have to do anything at all to prep the existing field uh, other than just, you know, well, and roll it. Yeah, because we could never roll it before, right, because it wasn't our field. And by doing that, you know, we're going to add the second fertilizer application. And it doesn't seem to... In How did I miss that piece over there? It doesn't seem to indicate that we need to, like, lime it or do any of that other stuff. So the computer farmer never, you know, never put fertilizer on it at all. They just don't do that, I guess. So, yeah, that's good news because it's way, way less work and expense for us. The field's pretty much already ready to go. Just got to add the extra part to it. Something I've been wanting to do for a very long time in this series.
All right, we got all of the grass picked up. So let's park the forage wagon just on the other side of the tracks there. Make sure no train's coming. And the next step here is for us to mow. Turn all of that off. So yeah, let's jump in a big... Oh, actually, no. Before we start mowing, let's get this guy rolling. We might as well. The McCormick has handled all of the rolling for us this time around. While we were busy doing uh, the logging and stuff. This is a handy little tractor, man. We've had it from since day one. I'll probably never get rid of it, just for sentimental reasons. Even though it's very old, it's got 137 hours on it. That's pretty old. Uh, well, at least by this game's reckoning. But it still does good work for us. We primarily use it for the cows, but I use it for the cows and for rolling. And pretty much those are the two things I use it for. Um, all right, so let's go to... It looks like I already have Field 71 Spiral Rolling set. And yeah, first waypoint, let's turn it loose. Very cool, okay. It is time, ladies and gentlemen, to cut all of this extra grass. Now, I don't think I'm gonna do the same thing I did on this side where we would, you know, it, it, I there's always a little bit of grass here that's hard to get. I think we're going to do more like what we did over on that side where we kind of curved it around the, the steepest part. Um, and to help encourage me to do that, we are going to, and in honor of all the elm trees that we killed, <laughs> we are going to plant a big elm tree right on this bank. And uh, so let's go to landscaping and trees. And we want to find American Elm. I think those are actually the first trees, right? Yeah, we're going to do a large American. That's going to cost me 4000 bucks. Yowzers. Um, but let's just put it. I don't really want the branches getting on the train track there. Not that it's really going to actually going to matter. Let's put it right here. There we go. And then we'll, when we mow, we'll kind of do like a little curve down that way. We could even change that MO on this side too, but now nah, let's not. Let's just go with what we got here. I mean, if I would have, if I would have been thinking about it, I would have left the trees that were there in the first place, but I didn't think about it until now. So there we go. So because of my lack of forethought, <laughs> we lost another 4,000 bucks. Uh, that's all good. It's fun. Okay. So, it is time to cut this grass. I think that's about the right positioning, I think. Except for, you know what, though? I, I want to get over this way just a little more. Because um, I'm kind of thinking about where I'm going to start the curve when we come down. So... Probably right about here is where we should start. I'm excited, man. This is fun. You guys, if you've been watching all along, you know I've wanted this field for a almost since day one, for a very long time. And uh, we finally have it. And we're going to take the largest hay field in the game and turn it into an even larger largest hay field in the game. All right, let's get to it. Um, you know what else might not be a bad idea here? Oh, you know, I don't have GPS on this. I should probably... Well, hmm, I don't know. Let's just try and stay at 270 degrees. We'll just watch the little mini-map there. Doesn't have to be perfect. But we want it close. The thing about putting GPS on this is that it's, it's really old. We got... Well, I guess it's not really, really old. There's only 51 hours on it, so it's not nothing like the McCormick tractor. 
I've never really noticed an issue with the age on this mower because I mean it does obviously the durability does run out more quickly but you know we only use it we don't use it as often as we use the tractors I guess is what I'm trying to say so it's it doesn't really seem to be a problem now you know there is a mod for the game that uh, I can't remember exactly what the mods called but the idea behind it is that the older your machinery gets the more likely you're gonna have breakdowns and stuff with it and it's quite realistic and you know for our next major playthrough of this game I might actually uh, use that mod but it's just something I didn't want to I didn't want to install it now you know another mod too that I'll probably use on our next major playthrough uh, farming playthrough not like logging like we're doing on silver run is um there's a mod where you have to actually purchase twine and netting for making bales which is super realistic and uh, that's something I'm sure we'll do too okay let's just do a little roundy thingy here because I don't want to be backing up trying to line up that and have a train come along because that wouldn't be good all right so oops if we get over here we don't have to be quite so accurate on the line there and even even now we didn't really because it's the plow plowing that's going to be the important part to get that straight these blades do kind of match the contour of the land to some extent which is neat but you know I've, I've always just loved the big game it's just a, an amazing machine it's my favorite we're cutting hay anyway. Okay, and then we'll just, yeah, we'll just kind of get over here and right to the edge of the road. That bush, I, I didn't get that bush with the forestry mulcher, but we'll be able to remove it with the plow. The plow will take it out. And I'm actually probably going to leave a little bit of a shoulder here on the road anyway. So, you know, basically. I'll probably leave where the grass turns a little darker as a shoulder because it's not very realistic to have a field come all the way to the absolute edge of the road and I know I've, uh, I've done that in the past but you know I'm learning I'm getting better at this game and figuring stuff out um let's go a little further this way Right about oh you know what I don't own that land that's why it's not letting me mow it okay that's this is where the border is gotcha okay so we'll start here and we'll just kind of go 90 degrees this way and we're gonna want to here I'll just finish this part out keeping nice neat windrows is not that not as important as it used to be with the with the V rake okay so at some point here we're gonna want to start curving around this so I'm gonna say probably right about here okay now this is actually all our property too but I meant like I mentioned earlier I wanted to leave the trees and the brush around the park just because it seemed like the right thing to do man it's a park after all right so I'll, I'll more or less plow the field following the lines that I'm making here with the mower 
Let me know what you guys think in the comments. Do you think we're going to get another 30% of yield, or do you think we're going to get more or less? Am I overestimating? Because here's the thing. I mean, it's not a real wide swath, but it's the outside edge of the field, which means there's more each time you make a pass, right? So I, I would be very, very surprised if it was less than 30%, but I'm not sure how we could really quantify that though either the only way we could really do that is if we only harvested the, the original field and tallied up exactly what we got from it which is also not possible because I've just combined everything from my other hay fields so it's just something we're gonna have to have to guess on that's all we can really do about it all right the final section for this part of the field I think what we'll do is we'll call this 71 South, this little section here. Field 71 South. Okay, now what we're going to do is we're going to go back over to this corner here. And we're going to mow right along the, um, the power lines. Now, when I mow this... I'm going to I'm going to mow all the way out to the road, but when I plow it, I'm going to plow this side of the power lines because yeah, it's just going to be a pain in the butt otherwise. So what we'll do is we'll just kind of swing out that way, swing in this way. But the very, you know, the the right side of these power lines, we're not we're not going to convert those uh, to field. got a little too close to it that time. <laughs> There's an arc for him to cut in hay, man. There really is. Who parked that JCB right in the road? I wonder. This is my new JCB tractor, ladies and gentlemen. Look at OG. He's so happy to be in his favorite tractor. He's even letting you know that this is old guy's tractor. Yes, indeed. <laughs> um, here, let's just park you over at the carpentry shop for the moment. We'll probably um, use the JCB to do the plowing. Well, actually... Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm probably going to have to do all the plowing myself. I don't know if I want to trust the AI to do it. We might be able to get them to help us after we get the, the border plow done. We'll see. The cable anchors for the power, power poles don't have collision on them. All right, so for this house, what, we're gonna, what I think I'm going to do is I'm just going to do a nice gradual circle around them rather than try and make hard angles something like this there we go okay and then when we get to here we're gonna want to just kind of curve up this way and connect to there all right there we go we got our border more or less figured out cool all right you guys well i'm gonna finish cutting um the rest of this grass and when i'm done uh, then what we have to do of course is go around and pick it up and then it'll be time to start plowing so i will probably not bring you back until we're ready to start plowing all right so i'll see you in a bit Okay, guys, um, I am finished with the mowing and rolling on the original 71. and But I'm bringing you back right now because I haven't actually picked up the hay yet. Because we're adding field 71 to the mix, I'm going to want to have, you know, once it's all prepped and, and 
and set up and ready to go. I'm going to want to have at least three tractors running silage uh, pickup. So that means we're going to go into here and we're going to go to, have we looked at the sales yet? Yeah, we've looked at the sales. This is a really good uh, low boy trailer, by the way, we're using, I have two of these in, um, uh, in silver run forest. I don't know why I would need one here though. And we have, cause we already have those two low boys that we already have. Uh, yeah, I don't think we need this here, but it's a very good trailer. Anyway, let's go to here and we want to find forage wagons. We're going to lease to own another TARDIS M, uh, 50,000 meters. And we want the color of the header to be the JCB color. So it matches the JCB tractor. <laughs> How about that? That's fantastic. We do want a silage additive tank and I think that's good. All right. So let's, uh, lease to own this. And we also want to get another uh, V rake as well. So that's going to be under windrowers, I think. Yep. And let's also lease to own one of these. Uh, we can, um, we can actually change the color. Can't we? We can have one color for each of our tractors. We can have a JCB wind rake. We'll leave the, the sign color black and then the other the other two next time i pull them out I'll, I'll run them over to the shop and change their color to um one to the new holland blue and one to the um the fint green cool all right okay so anyway let's um get hooked up here with our our, our new toys Okay, now what we're going to do is uh, fill the tank of our forage wagon with some silage additive, which we have in this silo over here. So we just have to kind of pull up close enough to get the tank near enough to it to press R and load it up. Okay, nice. I had mentioned earlier that I was going to use the JCB to plow, but I think I'll use the Fent only because the Fent has the most horsepower. So we'll use the JCB to pick up the the grass and then we'll use the fence to do the plowing both of them have gps um and that's important because i want to make sure we do nice straight lines on the edge of the field okay let's unfold the v-rake and pick up some hay 